Historically, the Vietnam War is seen as one of the most controversial wars in United States history. A conflict during the Cold War, Vietnam was seen by the American public as just another example of the U.S. playing world police. With the draft in full swing, the average age of American servicemen was 19, the lowest average in history. The Vietnamese soldiers, or Viet Cong, were relentless and utilized home field advantage using heavy guerrilla warfare. Men from all corners of the United States crossed the Pacific to defend the freedoms of democracy in South Vietnam. One local boy found himself in the middle of this conflict. Richard Turner grew up living a normal life in the suburbs of Massachusetts. In 1954, the Turner family moved to Wayland from the Chestnut Hill area. Richard continued to attend the River School until his junior year in high school when he transferred to Wayland High School, attending school in what is currently the town building. As a senior, Turner moved to the new state-of-the-art Wayland High School campus. After graduation, Turner was unsure of his future plans, and with the arrival of a draft order in the mail, Turner decided it was of his best interest to join the Navy rather than the Army. In February of 1964, Turner was sworn into the Navy. Turner was then put on a bus and sent to Great Lakes, Illinois for basic training where he found that he favored small boats. Turner requested to be stationed in Newport, Rhode Island. Instead, like many others, he was told to report for duty in preparation for Vietnam. After 12 weeks of preparation in California, Turner was granted some leave time to visit with his family. He had yet to break the news of his duties to them, and they were surprised by his visit home. I came home, my mother and father asked me, why are you home? I said, well, I just took some leave. I didn't want to tell them until, yeah. but I said, I have to go and see a travel agent and get a plane ticket to go somewhere. So finally, my father said, you've got to, what's going on? And I said, all right, let me go upstairs and get the envelope. I put it on the dining room table. Here's what's going on. I'm on my way, way to Vietnam. When Turner arrived in Vietnam, he performed the typical one-day Navy operations, monitoring rivers. He also performed rare 30-day operations. On 30-day operations, the men lived on the boat, eating sea rations out of cardboard boxes. During one of these month-long operations, Turner and the crew entered what was known as the Human Forest, an area that was heavily armed with Vietnamese soldiers. During this operation, Turner and his boat were met with opposition that resulted in a 12-hour firefight and injuries on deck. American troops hadn't gone into that area for five years. We got no contact going in, but coming out is when it, all hell broke loose. Our boat took a rocket hit in the starboard side, went through, just, for, just forward of the engine room, went right through the boat, right over the ammunition magazine storage, where all the high explosive rounds wow. were stored for the for the weapons, and it went right out the other side of the boat and detonated on Due to the loss of one of the motors, Turner's boat was being towed during the length of the firefight. Perhaps, if the engine hadn't broken, there would have been less injuries. We were on a tow line, and that, is, that was rough. That was not pretty at all. I mean, we had a couple of guys get very badly wounded that had to be medevaced. I had to be medevaced. And, but I was sent right back out into the field. I wasn't out for long. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, it's a bad situation. I took a piece of shrapnel in my leg. Uh, you can't I hardly see the scar anymore. And um, I got a purple heart out of it. Mm -hmm. And it, what it was was a piece of metal that was mounted on a, what they call a bulkhead on a boat. It blew off and caught me in the leg. Upon returning home, Turner received many other medals, including the National Defense Service Medal, Good Conduct Medal with four stars, and the Vietnam Service Medal with four stars. The Vietnam War was one of the most unpopular wars in United States history. People on the home front publicly held war demonstrations protesting our presence in Vietnam, including the infamous incident at Kent State, which resulted in four dead students. Since this war was so unpopular, men coming home were constantly under scrutiny. We were known as baby killers. That's, you know, we didn't get a welcome home. It's just beginning to surface now. But when I got off the plane in Boston, I'd lost a ton of weight from being over there. 
I was walking through Logan Airport and they knew I was in the military because I was in civilian clothes but I had to carry that brown envelope which was a dead giveaway and there was a group of people standing there and they looked at me oh he must be another baby killer and I heard that and I turned around excuse me and some guy said what are you a baby killer I said no I'm not a baby killer and I walked over and you got a problem and a cop came over and told me to keep going It took almost 15 years for these men to be recognized as the heroes that they truly are. In 1988, the Vietnam War Memorial was built and dedicated to those who died in the war. Now, days like Veterans Day and Memorial Day have parades in part to remember Vietnam veterans. Turner has done his best to make sure these days stay important well, that's why, in the you know, minds Memorial of Americans. Memorial Day means a lot to me. Veterans Day means a lot. That's one of the reasons I've stuck on the Public Ceremonies Committee running all these events for veterans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, we're getting accepted more and more, but it's going to be a long time. That's a wound that, to me, that's like an open wound that will never heal. Mm -hmm. Like many Vietnam veterans, Turner suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Even today, the images from the war are etched in Turner's head. Turner still sees a psychologist to help him deal with this problem. They said I was a totally different person when I came home. I got into drinking, I had a little problem with that, overcame it. Um, it was totally different. Short temper, short fuse, mm -hmm. not as bad anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when my father was living and I was taking care of him, that was, toward the end there, it got very stressful. That's when I said, enough of this is enough, I'm gonna kill myself, I had to put him in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. and so, that was, I had to go see the VA doctor about once a week just to get help, you know, and I'm not ashamed to say I, I'm still seeing a psychiatrist for this. Mm -hmm. and it's, I make no bones about it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a fact. It's the fact of life. Mm -hmm. People that don't get help are the ones that really get messed up. And I see that every time I go to the VA hospital in Bedford, these guys that are practically reliving the war, they're sitting out front smoking and, and talking swapping war stories. That's no life. It has taken its toll on me. You know, it's it's hard. Uh -huh. uh, war is, is not pretty. Uh -huh. It is definitely not pretty.